Hi, I'm Elisa from the Wenatchee River Institute, where we connect people, communities, and the natural world. We welcome you to our campus, right next to the Wenatchee River, a special place for salmon. The land that Wenatchee River Institute calls home, all of Leavenworth, all of Wenatchee Valley, and much, much more, is the ancestral homelands of the Pascosa or Wenatchee people. Before we dive into the river and learn about the life of a salmon, I wanted to run through the five different types of Pacific salmon. These salmon spend their adult stage of their lives in the Pacific Ocean. All right, hold up your, your hand with all five fingers out. Each finger on our hand can help us remember the five different types of Pacific salmon. Thumb is chum, which rhymes. Pointer finger is sockeye, like you're gonna po poke an eye out. Middle finger, the largest finger on our hand, is chinook salmon, the largest salmon. Ring finger, the one that might have a ring on it is the silver salmon. And pinky is the pink salmon. All right, do you think you can remember it all? Let's do it one more time. Thumb is chum. Pointer finger is sockeye. Middle finger is chinook. Ring finger is silver and pinky finger is pink. The stages of the Chinook salmon's life do occur in a cycle. The cycle begins and ends with a process called spawning, which is when eggs are deposited by a female salmon and fertilized by a male salmon. Females lay about 3,000 eggs into a nest in a gravelly stream bed called a red to give the eggs a chance of making it to the next stage. These eggs will develop right where they were deposited this year during the fall of 2020. Do you think all 3,000 eggs will be fertilized, survive, and move on to the next stage? Only about 1,000 eggs make it to the next stage, sac fry, or alevin. The young salmon will become sac fry during the winter of 2020. For one month, their food supply is attached to them. Point to where you think their food supply is. That's their yolk sac. Their yolk sac should keep them fed until early spring of 2021, before they push up out of their pebble bed home and into the river's current. The young salmon are now in the fry stage during the spring of 2021. This is perfect timing because they are now strong enough to swim in low current areas behind a large rock or between logs, and arthropods, which include insect spiders and crustaceans, are also waking up and falling into the rivers where hungry salmon live. The next stage is par or fingerling. These juvenile salmon stay in fresh water. They feed and they grow for up to three years. Notice the dark vertical bands on their body. These bands disappear when they enter their next stage, smolt. The salmon are now entering a process called smoltification. This is when salmon begin to change their physiology or the way their bodies work to survive in saltier water. Most salmon species spend some time in the estuary of a river, where the fresh water mixes with the salt water. Here, they gradually get used to life in the salty water in preparation for the time they will spend at sea. So at this point, our salmon has now survived long enough to make it to the ocean. They have crossed 500 miles and seven dams to make it from Icicle Creek to the Pacific Ocean. Spring Chinook salmon can spend one to eight years in the ocean with most averaging two or three years. Some males or jacks spend as few as one year before journeying back to their original streams to spawn. Salmon are able to use their incredible sense of smell to determine their way back home to spawn. The migration back home to spawn is one of the most challenging periods in the salmon life cycle. Once they reach fresh water, they stop feeding and healing from minor injuries such as cuts and bruises. During the course of their journey, their bodies change dramatically for spawning. They lose the silvery blue color they had in the ocean and become much darker. Males developed hooked noses in order to fight for dominance. Sockeye salmon turn a dazzling bright red. 
Upon reaching their final destination, females build nests, or reds. She digs in the riverbed with her body, laying her eggs, which will then be fertilized and buried with gravel. Chinook salmon only spawn once in their lifetime, so after they are finished, they, they die pretty quickly. Their bodies supply the river habitat with important nutrients and the next generation that will someday return to continue the cycle. Salmon are a keystone species in both aquatic and terrestrial environments, meaning they are a critical part of the ecosystem in water and on land. Many other species depend on them for survival. Orca feed on salmon in the ocean, along with sea lion, eagle, and osprey. Once the salmon return to the rivers after their time spent in the salt water, absorbing those precious sea minerals and nutrients as they eat and grow, they feed bear and other carnivorous mammals, including humans. When bears and birds catch and eat salmon, they leave nutritious fertilizer in the form of poop all throughout the forest. And the salmon that don't get eaten by predators and make it back to complete their mating ritual finally finish their life by peacefully dying in their home stream. By doing this, the salmon are even feeding the trees, shrubs, and insects throughout the forest with their decomposing bodies. If salmon disappeared from the scene, there would be devastating effects for the entire ecosystem. Just as salmon is important to the environment, it is also very important to people. Joining us today is Wendell George, a Native American elder, to answer some questions about how salmon is important to him and his people. Well, I'm a tribal member uh, from the Colville Confederate Tribes. There's 12 tribes there, and I'm, I'm associated with mostly with the Inyat tribe, although I do have association with uh, Wenatchee and Chelan and, and uh, Moses Columbia. When, uh, before the dams, the, we got 10 or 11 dams up the Columbia River, and there's four major tribes that uh, live right on the river. And uh, Columbia River had the greatest salmon run in the world there before uh, the dams. See, this is a primary food for us. We had salmon and we had deer and we had uh, grouse, we had all those natural things. Salmon, though, is tremendous as far as uh, vitamins go. Vitamin A, you just name the vitamins, there, it's all there. And it was uh, just to kept us healthy. And without the salmon, we, we had no substitute. The tribes, this was part of their culture and part of their history and part of their food, uh, everything. When, when salmon was running, we'd have, uh, there were several places up the river that would all meet to, to uh, catch the salmon and uh, process it. We, we dried it and we did all kinds of things to keep it over the winter. And, uh, and uh, this was big get togethers. We had a reason for all our tribes to come together and meet with people and do all kinds of uh, things that uh, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do. And so we still have those, but there's no salmon or there wasn't any salmon. Salmon is also used as gifts. We give, uh, uh, other tribes when they need it. It's, uh, so it's both our culture and, and our, uh, our food. Throughout the entire life cycle of the Pacific salmon, they play an important role in the environment and in the lives of people.